Good morning, one and all, and welcome to the Damage Preport. I'm John Arilla, and I'm back, everyone. I'm here, and I'm here to talk uh, seemingly once again about how Sydney Sweeney has suddenly become one of the most politically relevant people in our country for reasons that have less to do with her than any prior person's ascension into the political mainstream has had to do with them in history. She has nothing to do with any of this, but the right wing, like... She's just this obstacle they can't get past. She has broken their brains, and we're going to break it down. Because there was a tweet that was sent out that I think reveals virtually everything about the right. And how they think, and how they don't think, and how the way that they think is broken. So we're going to get to that in just a little bit. And you can get us there faster by hitting the like button. Kenzie Page, thank you. You've been here for 23 months. Welcome back, Dragon Daddy. I'm glad to be back. Um, I had to do baby stuff, I had to take care of a baby for a week, and it was a great experience. I got to see my brother who was in town. Um, I got to take him to Gold's Gym, and uh, RFK Jr. was working out there while we were working out there, so that's cool. No Arnold, though. I was hoping I would get to bro out with him, but it didn't happen. But anyway, we do have a lot of other stuff to talk about. I, I want to talk about irony, and irony is going to pop up in uh, a good number of the stories that we will be talking about today. But there was a message that Trump sent out on Truth Social. You know, I'm gonna bring up the actual message because we have like an embed of it and you guys deserve better. Or do you? I don't know, not even 200 of you have hit the like button. Maybe you don't. But anyway, yeah, no, let's go to this. Okay, so this is a message that Trump sent out today on Truth Social. Received this morning, beautiful, thank you. It's ironic that Christ walked through his greatest persecution the very week they are trying to steal your property from you. But have you seen this verse? Blah, blah, psalm, blah, blah, blah. Lots of stuff about prayer and evil and sin and all of this. So someone on Truth Social sent it to him because they're praying for him. And uh, Trump just wanted to send it out, you know, to um, thank the person and uh, to, you know, like remind everyone that he's such a religious man. Do you know what the irony of this is? Do you know where Donald Trump was when he truthed this message? He was sitting in court trying to figure out when his trial is going to start for the hush money that he committed fraud in regard to in trying to pay off an adult film star that he had had a, an effectively non-consensual affair with a couple months after his wife gave birth to Barron. So he is sitting in court after having broken the law to hide from his wife the fact that he had cheated on her. And he's covering for that with psalm and prayer and amen. And of course he's going to do that. Trump can do that because he doesn't give a shit about any of that stuff. He Like, however, I'm an atheist. Okay, that's probably pretty clear. I think that you all know that. However little sort of fundamental respect or like a feeling of sacredness you think there is that I have towards religion, Trump has so much less respect because he doesn't give a shit about any religion, any religious views, perspectives, values, any of that. I think the vast majority of, unfortunately, the way that Christianity is filtered into American politics is in a way that I think is, is awful. But I think there are some really great people who are informed by their religious values. He doesn't give a shit about any of them. And these MAGA people are sending him Bible verses. He doesn't give a shit about your Bible, man. And it's so crazy to me that that person, whoever it is that sent it to him, and I'll assume that somebody actually did send it to him. Um, normally he just retweets them, for some reason he didn't. But I'm gonna assume that it's real. That person would hate me, and I get it. I admit that I'm an atheist, but I respect you so much more than he does. He doesn't give a shit about this. He thinks you're a goof. He thinks that you're a mark. And it works, it works. It convinces him. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works at all. But anyway, he's in court. And by the way, I know that I see people messaging about the, um, the, the fraud bond, don't, do wor don't you worry. We will be talking about that on the show. Francesca Fiorentini is going to be there. We are obviously going to be talking about all of those big updates. We've got a lot of, a lot of updates to discuss. 
Um, we're about to hit a thousand people live on the stream. Good to see. Only about forty percent of you have hit the like button, though. So maybe we could jump on that one and all as we move into other news. Okay, something that makes more sense to me is uh, Donald Trump, amidst all of this legal trouble, he's already had to pay the nearly $100 million bond. He's got hundreds of millions more coming in this other bond. He's got a criminal trial about to start. And what is he focusing on in advance of that? This is a message that he sent out just yesterday, okay? It was this. Blah, 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 Trump International Golf Club. I received the club championship trophy and the senior club championship trophy. I won both. A large and distinguished group will be here tonight. Very exciting. Thank you. He is very, very excited to have won all of the awards at his own golf club. So he owns the club, and it's just the way it worked out. He's the best golfer there. He's better than all of the other golfers. He, he legitimately won because he's so good at hitting the ball and making it go in the hole. And that's that's the only reason and the sum total of all of the reasons that he won it. <sighs> he cheated. He che I don't even care. I really don't care. But he definitely cheated. But it doesn't matter. He's so excited. <laughs> like, he's being given this, like, pity thing that, like, never meant anything because there was never going to be a competition. And he is so concerned about it. He could be going to jail soon. And he's so concerned about getting a trophy from the place he owns. Now, all of that is funny. And theoretically, I might have read it, for, read it to you just for that. But I love this. Uh, Dark Brandon uh, raised his head and uh, popped up to say, Congratulations, Donald. Quite the accomplishment. I mean, that's funny. Like... It's so, so sarcastic, so much shade. Just like, yeah, no, no, buddy, that's great. That's great that you won that trophy. Um, we'll see if that helps you in your legal troubles or in the election. But um, uh, what is going to, I ask you this, I ask you a very serious question. Um, what are we going to have when we are past this stupid, stupid, stupid period? In American history. Where will we be as a people? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we're going to be turning to Sydney Sweeney in just a moment or two. Everybody, please hit the like button if you have not already. I want to go to this. I don't think I'm going to play the video. I don't think we have time. But Marco Rubio was uh, asked the thing that I think not nearly enough politicians are asked when they go on the news. And it is to respond to things they've said. Like, Clearly, they didn't mean when they said it or want you to believe they don't mean now. So he was on ABC News and he was asked, you know, because right now he's in the running, apparently, to be Trump's VP. I don't think and I know I know some of you are going to say, well, you know, the, the president, and the vice president can't both be from the same state. I understand that. I think that's an amazing bit of political trivia. Uh, the law doesn't matter. The Constitution doesn't matter. So I, I have a feeling that is not the main reason that Marco Rubio is unlikely to become the VP. But feel free to acknowledge it. That's perfectly fine. So he was asked about during the 2016 campaign when he notably ran against Donald Trump, he called him a con man. Okay. So they played that for him. And Rubio's response was, it was a campaign. And that is something that he returns to multiple times while talking to Jonathan Carl. Look, he points out that Kamala Harris was also critical of Joe Biden, which is definitely true. But he repeats, it was a campaign. He says a third time, it was a campaign. And the thing that I think is amazing about that is labeling someone a con man feels like, and you feel free to disagree with me, feels like it kind of crosses a line this isn't like, I have a tax plan, and my opponent, my honorable opponent, has a different tax plan, and I believe that my tax plan is better than his tax plan. You called him a con man. And here is the amazing thing about it. Marco Rubio, you were right. He was and is a con man. You said a thing that was true. And now you're telling us the only reason you said it was because it was a campaign, which is just amazing, like as an excuse. So what are you saying exactly? That you just say stuff you don't believe? Like he's not saying, 
Oh no, I obviously, I'm not a liar, I'm honest. I, whatever I said, I meant it at the time, but the circumstances have changed. And I think that he has really shown since then that he's not a con man. He's not saying that. He's not even saying he's a con man, but you know what? He's better for the country anyway. His economic policies, his immigration policies, pff, whatever, I don't care. Make up for it. He's not saying that either. He's just saying it was a campaign. Don't believe anything I say because I just lie. I just lie uh, because of the times that we're in. I'm trying to beat the guy, so I'll lie about him. And it doesn't mean anything. So why should we believe anything you say about Joe Biden? It's a campaign. I just, like, the, the expectations, the standards are so abysmally low for these people. And I don't just mean in terms of honesty, obviously, but even their ability to cover for their actions. The standards are buried deep underground. Okay, I want to just mention one other story before we get to the Sydney Sweeney. Um, and it's this. It's terrible, by the way, and uh, potentially triggering. Um, so I apologize for that. But a 13-year-old victim of rape now has an 8-month-old baby. Now. DNA from the baby was used to apprehend the suspect, I suppose, to the extent that there is any silver lining to this story, it would be that. But in Mississippi, obviously, they have uh, very anti-choice uh, laws. That's what they've done, thanks to Donald Trump and thanks to the killing of Roe v. Wade. Uh, rape was almost 100% effectively outlawed in Mississippi. Now, the interesting thing is, theoretically, they found out after the birth of the product of the rape of a 12 year old. Um, she was 11 weeks pregnant. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, uh, that she might have fit under their exception. But the thing is, and this is why I mentioned this story, is a reminder that Mississippi is one of those states that wants to just totally outlaw abortion, and that's what they've done, importantly. But they also don't have the balls to say that that's what they're doing. So they understand that that looks really, really bad in a handmaid's tale sort of way. So they lie and say, we have an exception for rape. But they don't. Uh, analysts have said that even if the family had known prior to the birth, she almost certainly could have not have gotten uh, the abortion. Because they wouldn't be able to find a doctor who would do it because the doctor would be too worried that even though this is a 12-year-old who had been raped, they could end up going to jail. So she is now 13. She is a seventh grader, to put that in perspective. I remember being in seventh grade. Do you remember being in seventh grade? Can you imagine having a child in seventh grade? Can you imagine being forced by the state to have a child in seventh grade? This is, this is what the Republicans have set up. This is not like a crazy random consequence that never could have been foreseen. This is the legal status quo that they wanted and they have produced. No Republican politician is shedding a tear for this having happened. They don't care. And this is what we have. And this is what we have in many, many states and maybe federally if the Republicans get their way, because they vacillate uh, day by day between, well, we would never you know, do anything at a federal level. This is all about the state, too. Uh, we're just trying to decide exactly which week we're going to cut it off at. They're never going to stop, because they can't stop, because they need this for campaigns. We said this when they killed Roe v. Wade. We said this so many times. And it remains true. Okay, I want to jump now to our main story, which has to do with Sydney Sweeney. It shouldn't, because why should anything that Sydney Sweeney does really matter in terms of politics? Unless she chooses to enter into the realm of politics, but she has never, as far as I've seen, ever done that. But that does not stop her from constantly being brought up by the right. And I think that it reveals a lot about them, so we're gonna talk about it. Hit the like button if you haven't already. So this, uh, the account that posted what I'm about to show you has since deleted their account, and you'll understand why very shortly. But here's what they posted after seeing, I'm not even sure that they watched the movie Immaculate, because bear in mind that the right has never felt that they needed to consume art to be triggered by it or to complain about it. So they posted this. 
Libs saw how the anti-woke crowd embraced Sydney Sweeney as their new darling and right away had to shove her in this blasphemous, satanic, feminist, pro-abortion, anti-life movie degrading Christians. This movie also debases Mary, mother of the Christ. Don't bother watching. You can just say mother of Christ, by the way. I'm an atheist, but I know that. Uh, see, she's in this movie, Immaculate. It's about a nun, and stuff happens. I haven't seen it. I don't think they have either. Um, but the idea is, okay, if you haven't been following this, Sydney Sweeney is an actress. And Sydney Sweeney, in addition to being an actress, has boobs. And you need to know this, because that is very, very important to the right. So, a few weeks ago, she was on SNL. And on SNL, she did something bold. She was there... And her boobs were also there. And because of that, the anti-woke crowd embraced Sydney Sweeney. Now, you might be thinking, well, they've never defined what woke is, so what does it mean to be anti-woke? Well, apparently it means that a white woman had boobs, and so, hero? That's what it means. So they embraced her as their new darling. You see, she killed wokeness by having boobs on SNL, and I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. But if SNL is a woke place... Why did they have the woman with the boobs on? Because the boobs are anti-woke, and SNL is woke, uh, because none of this makes any fucking sense, and it's all in their fucking head. SNL brought her on. They wanted, the, the woke people wanted to have her on, so how can her presence be anti-woke? It doesn't make any sense. But then, you see, the conspiracy thickens, okay? Because then, after the SNL, for some reason, had the anti-woke boob woman on, then the left is like, aha, we need to shove her into this movie immaculate. And many of you may not know this, but movies are typically made in about two weeks. So after SNL, they put her in this movie. They, not her. She had nothing to do with this. They put her into this movie to fuck over conservatives. That's what they did. That's not actually what they did. Apparently, she auditioned for the movie back in 2014. The movie didn't end up getting made. Then, two years ago, she reached out to the original writer. She bought the script. She had it reworked. She was a producer on the film. She put herself into the film, and the film has now been released. But that's only what happened in reality. In conservative conspiracy fantasy land, the left made her do this movie so that her good right-wing boobs would be affiliated with something anti-Christian. I love how, in their thing, she cannot have any fucking agency. She had nothing to do with SNL. She had nothing to do with Immaculate. She is just a pair of boobs on a spine and legs that is being used by people politically or whatever. That's not actually any of what happened. She's just a woman going about her career. And yes, she does happen to have boobs, but those boobs do not have to be political unless she chooses to make them political. And thus far, she has not done that. But I love this. They have this entire, like I have done fantasy world building. You can probably tell based on sight that I'm the sort of person that's probably done some fantasy world building. I, in fact, have Google Docs that I've made for the different worlds that I write in, fantasy and sci-fi, at patreon.com slash John Adarola. I have one for my world of animal fantasy. It is literally like 150 pages of world building details. And so obviously I am a person who appreciates a compelling, well thought out internal life of fantasy. But even I have never delved into such depths of insanity as these people. They have created this entire cinematic universe of Sydney Sweeney and her boobs that have made her both like the good trad femme right wing woman that she has never claimed herself to be, who is now being used by the left to take down Christianity even though she made the fucking movie. And something, something, her boobs killed wokeness? Except I guess it didn't because they made the movie. So I guess you guys were premature to say that it killed wokeness. I don't understand these people. Um, I saw on Instagram, I think it was, maybe it was on YouTube. It was a trailer for the new Beetlejuice called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And it looks like a good movie. And the first comment I saw was, is this going to be another woke movie? And I just thought, where did we go wrong as a people, as a species? What is wrong with us? Just watch the fucking movie. Or, alternatively, don't watch the fucking movie. That is how I have approached every movie that has ever existed. I either fucking watched it, or I didn't fucking watch it. 
You could just do that, you know? And you can like Sydney Sweeney and her boobs or not like Sydney Sweeney and her boobs. But it doesn't have to be like the core of your politics. I understand that everybody has things that they're obsessed with. Lots of people do. You know, some people are obsessed with Harry Potter. Some people are obsessed with like Real Housewives or something like that. Um, but it's like it takes the right to take their obsession with wokeness and all this that they're doing the same thing as like a kid who's obsessed with dinosaurs. They just invest everything into it and that's what they want to talk about. But in none of those other interests do the people think that that has elevated them to some sort of superior intellectual and moral position. I'm like obsessed with Star Wars. I don't think that I'm better than you because I'm obsessed with Star Wars, but they do think they're better than you because they're really obsessed with never seeing a person on screen who is, uh, let's say, black or Asian or a woman, or if they are a woman, if they're flat-chested, God forbid, they freak the fuck out, and that is their interest, that is the core of who they are, and they are trying to bring more men into the movement, and I really hope that they're unsuccessful with that because this is no way to live. I know that. I don't know a lot, but I know that this is no way to live. Anyway, uh, thank you all for being here for this pre-port. We have a full show coming up in just about five minutes. I'm actually way behind, so I'm going to run, but thank you for being here. Please hit the like button on the way out if you haven't already, and I will see you soon.